Good evening. Hey there, Candace. It says the host has disabled video. Okay. Let me take a look here. How about now? Yep. I see about a seven attendees coming in a little bit early. We'll give a couple more minutes for people to roll in and for David and Blake to get here. For those of you just joining us, uh, this is Cam Willison. And I'm Candace Bradley, both members of the Invinity Solar team, bringing you our third webinar regarding solar financing, tricks of the trade, everything that you need to know, uh, how to maximize your investment. You know, there's a lot of options out there. We will have Blake from Clean Energy Credit Union joining us. Um, so someone on the finance side, and then also those of us who put solar proposals out there and have seen a lot of other solar proposals out there in the market. If you haven't joined us for a webinar yet, we do have a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. That's to direct questions that you would like answered in the Q&A session to panelists. And then there's also a chat button that uh, someone can get started uh, where you can talk to each other. Looks like we have Blake and David joining us. You should be able to turn on your own video if you'd like. We're going to wait a few more minutes before we get started. All right. I see we already have a question ready for the Q&A session. Excited about that. If you think of anything along the way, attendees, please go to your Q&A button and start collecting those questions. Can everybody see my screen? A thumbs up or a thumbs down from Cameron David, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Welcome to solar webinar number three for the year, funding solar. We're gonna talk about everything um, finance related with solar. And I believe we have David kicking off this solar webinar. Um, David wasn't able to join us on solar webinar number two on solar energy storage. So he's gonna kick us off. Thank you, Candace. 
Yes, welcome everyone to our third virtual tour, specifically talking about financing tonight. Let's get started. First, talking through the agenda, we'll talk about some of the event goals for tonight. Um, I am David. I'll intro our sponsors and our panelists tonight. I'll give a State of the Union on solar in Pennsylvania so far in 2021. Then I'll be passing it off to Cam to talk about home energy financing options, and then he'll debunk some concerns about solar financing. We'll have a wonderfully fun Kahoot quiz where you can win a fabulous prize to be disclosed later. Uh, we'll have some Q&A blocks for you, to ask, for you to ask some questions that come up. Um, the star of the presentation tonight, we will have, are happy to be joined by Blake Jones of the Clean Energy Credit Union. And he'll be giving an awesome presentation on their offerings. There he is. Uh, and then we'll finish up the night with some referrals and announce who the Kahoot winner is. So event goals for tonight, we're to share the state of solar in our region and how you can affect PA policy. Uh, as solar owners and potential solar owners, what do you need to know about financing and what options are available? And it's always a goal of every event to have uh, practice good etiquette. So if you can please keep yourself on mute uh, and uh, save questions for the carved out Q&A blocks. And then we'll also, if, you, if a question pops up in between those, you can throw them in the chat and we'll make sure to address them. Our panelists tonight, first is me, I'm David, joined Infinity in March, 2021. I am a father to two cats. Uh, I'm building a camper uh, and I love spreading the good word of solar, especially with Infinity. Also joining me is Cam of Infinity. He's been with Infinity since March, 2020. His interests include mountain biking, camping, and helping people save money which is particularly apt to tonight's topic and to Cam's background of financing. And then Blake Jones of the Clean Energy Credit Union joins us as a volunteer board director for the Clean Energy Credit Union and a self-proclaimed energy geek of the last 20 years. And then sadly not joining us as panelists, but we'd always like to introduce to our new solar, newest solar clients, Common and Nittany, the alpacas, uh, cheesing in front of their new array. Maybe next, maybe next event they'll join us as panelists. And of course, I'd like to thank our sponsors, um, the Penns Valley Conservation Association, State College Inc. Professionals, the Clearwater Conservancy, Penn Environment, and the Sierra Club. The State of Solar in Pennsylvania 2021. That is me in my State of Solar outfit. Uh, we'll talk about the tax credit and moreover how it's gonna work and how it works for you. We'll talk about SREC prices and that they're rising and why. We'll talk about the four letters AEPS and what those mean and why they're important and why should you go solar now? Why not wait? The tax credit. Most of you are probably aware there is a 26% federal non-refundable tax credit for 2021 and 2022. Now, what does non-refundable mean? Jump down on bullet points here. That just means the tax credit cannot exceed tax liability, which is how much you owe the government. So let's say you get a solar system and you get $10,000 tax credit, but you only owe the government $5,000 that year. You can only reap $5,000 in benefit per that tax year. The rest can be rolled over. So what do you do? How do you claim this tax credit? How is it actually received? Um, after your system's turned on and you're reaping in that renewable energy, uh, and it comes tax filing season, you will look for and file IRS form 5695. And then you just get a check, right? Envelope of cash coming straight to you from the government. Eh, kind of, not really, but maybe. Uh, there's two common scenarios of what's gonna happen based on our client experiences. And they're based on your personal tax situation, whether you pay taxes to your employer as a uh, pay period withholding, or if you pay taxes independently if you're self-employed or some other situation. So in the first scenario, if you're paying taxes through your employer, you probably already paid most of the taxes you owe. So come tax season and you file for your tax credit, you will have overpaid the government substantially. So you will be um, dispersed a pretty substantial refund that year. 
and then any extra exceeding tax liability will be carried over. And then if you pay taxes on your own, your tax bill just goes down very low or can be carried over the next year. And we're not tax professionals. I know I sound really smart, like I know I'm talking about, um, but we always recommend that you consult a tax professional, uh, someone you trust to walk you through this process. An SREC, also in the state of solar 2021. What is an SREC? It's a solar renewable energy credit. Once you turn your system on, it will generate these digital credits passively. You don't do anything. It'll, we, our system will track it for you. You can watch their accrual. For every thousand kilowatt hours you generate, you earn an SREC and they are worth money. Utilities will buy them from you. Uh, and they're currently sitting at $41 each, which is up almost 100% so far this year, which is awesome. Uh, and the reason that's happening, because Ohio used to be able to sell their system for their SREX in Pennsylvania. And we said, stop doing that four years ago. And current systems that were grandfathered past our stop doing that law are being phased out. So the supply is dwindling, which is good, good for PA SREC prices. But to keep that price climbing, we have to enact policy. If you compare other SREC markets in New Jersey and DC, you can see those numbers. There's no reason that can't be us. And the only the way we can get there is through policy, which I will talk about in the next slide. So I just wanna bring up the chat. Normally the chat is blowing up right about now with people who have solar and they're learning more about solar and the updates in our sessions. Um, I know some of you in the participant list do have solar. If you wanna share how much your SRX have been worth and if you're seeing them go up, that would be a great chat topic for attendees. Um, I'm looking at a couple specific people. Your names look familiar. Not going to call anybody out, but you know what you're talking about. Second, that'd be awesome. Thank you, Candace. So, enact policy. What can you, the homeowner, do? Well, we can talk about the AEPS, Alternative Energy Portfolio Standard. This was a law that Pennsylvania passed in 2004. And it mandated that a half percent of all PA electricity from utilities must come from solar by June 1, 2020, which was at the time pretty landmark legislation. We were leading the front in renewable energy. And this cat is jumping up and down so excited because we did it. We did it, guys. We did it. We hit that threshold. We have installed that much solar that that much is coming throughout PA. Um, but we can do better. And since 2004, other states have far surpassed our policy, um, which is a shame. We, we should be a leader in solar energy. And two recent bills have come up, which I've linked down below, House Bill 1080 and State, sorry, House Bill 1080 and Senate Bill 501. And that could push that 0.5% to 5.5% in the next five years, which if that passed would be huge. It would drive massive public and private investment. Uh, it would drive SREC prices way up. It would just really help solarize. PA, which is no is what all of us want to do. So please look into those bills, look into legislation, write your senators, write your house representative. We can do this. And then finally, why should you go solar now? You've probably seen the news, and it's true that the costs of solar have come down a lot, and it's and they have. It's opened up and made solar accessible to a lot of people that it didn't it used to not be accessible to. But sadly, we plateaued. Um, the cost of panels, inverters, rail wire, skilled labor, everything we do to put a solar system in place is projected to increase in price over the coming years, um, which means lock in your contracts now. That's a shame. We're, we don't want the price to go up either, but um, due to supply shortages, COVID, the prices are going up. So lock in your contracts now while you can. Uh, and then another reason why go solar now, you've probably seen the news just a couple weeks ago, a report from the United Nations uh, International Panel on Climate Change saying that climate change is one real and it's, there's a, we're pretty much locked into a 1.5 degrees Celsius increase, but we can, what I took from that report is not overly gloomy. It said that we can act now and we can stem further climate change. And one amazing way to do that is to install more solar at every scale from utility down to your house. Um, it's one of the best ways that you individually can make a difference. 
Um, you're making your own solar power and renewable energy, which is awesome, but you also become like a beacon of the future to your neighbors. And you can help encourage them to go solar as well. And you can uh, make this dog, look how happy this dog is in front of his own solar arrays. And that can be you smiling in front of your own solar arrays. So that concludes my portion of this evening's presentation. So I'd like to hand it off to our finance guru, Cam. Thanks a lot for that solid intro there, David. Uh, I just wanted to take a second and say thank you to everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, hopefully we can all learn a little bit more about some solar finance here. Um, and also, if you do have questions, please remember to drop them in that chat down there and we will get to those at the first Q&A block. Okay, so without further ado, I'll get started on some home energy financing options. Um, and just to kind of give an overview of these, uh, the first of these is self-financing, uh, which is also known as cash. Um, another option is home equity financing. Um, and then uh, the big key point of this presentation is the solar specific financing that we're able to offer through our partners. So the first of these is self-financing or what we like to refer to as cash. Um, this will have the best ROI of any of those options. Um, and that would be because you're not paying the interest of borrowing the money to buy your solar. Um, with this option, you would own your system outright. And you'd also be able to cut your monthly energy expenses immediately. Um, so that's a nice option if you've got the cash to do so. So second on the roster is home equity secured financing. So using some of that equity built up in your home and leveraging that to pay for your solar. Um, so these uh, different options are great because they have rates that are in line with mortgage rates. So pretty low, as I'm sure you've all heard at this, uh, this year, especially with COVID and everything. Um, and just some examples of those uh, home equity options would be a home equity loan, which is pretty standard. Probably everybody here has heard of that. Um, a home equity line of credit, which is similar. Um, and then if you've got an existing mortgage um, and you'd like to buy that out as well as pull out some money to pay for your solar, you can go with a refinance as well. So that's an option too. So last but definitely not least, um, is Infinity Solar Specific Financing Options. And these are secured by the solar equipment only, uh, which means that they're not tied in any way to the equity built up in your home. Um, and so Infinity has partnered with a few different companies to do this, uh, the first of which is Clean Energy Credit Union, um, who's also going to be providing a short, short presentation uh, for everybody here tonight. Um, and then we're also able to offer loans through Mosaic to pay for your solar as well. Awesome. So before we dive into some Q&A here, um, I just wanted to take a few minutes and debunk some of the top uh, concerns with solar financing. Um, so the first of those is debt is bad. Um, another one is no home equity. Um, and then the last one there is that loans make paybacks longer. Yep, so just to go into this first one here, that debt is bad, question mark. Uh, so I guess that depends what you're really using that debt for. Um, and if you use that debt to finance solar, uh, I would say that the benefits tend to outweigh the cons there. Um, and just get into a few points here. Uh, your solar payment, so your payment that you'd get uh, for your solar loan would have an end date, which is basically, you know, after your loan is over, you still got your solar. Um, and then on the other hand, your electric bill, which you're probably currently paying, uh, will not end. Uh, moving on to that second point. Um, so once you decide to enter into a solar loan, uh, that payment is fixed for the life of the loan. On the other hand, um, as you have probably seen, uh, as electric rates go up, your electric bill will definitely also go up. Um, and then additionally, uh, your solar payment, so buying solar with a loan, will also get you access to those SRECs, 
that David mentioned earlier in the presentation, um, just as a source of passive income, uh, that's a bonus for solar. Um, and again, your electric bill does not get you access to those SRECs. So no, no home equity, uh, no problem. So those solar specific financing options that we mentioned earlier, uh, those aren't tied to the home equity. So they're not tied to any equity that you have built up in your home. They're only tied to the equipment itself. Um, and for that reason, if you don't have home equity, uh, that's not a problem. You can get one of these loans uh, without having that equity. So the last of these concerns here, uh, that loans make paybacks longer. Uh, now that is true, but the benefit there, however, is that you don't actually have a payback anymore because you don't have that cash shelled out at the front. Um, hence, we like to call them zero down. So all you'd have there is your monthly payment um, and you wouldn't actually have any money due up front, which is nice. Um, and additionally, that monthly payment has a potential to be lower than your current electric bill, which is honestly the ideal scenario. Um, and then, uh, like I said, ideally, uh, you could potentially replace your power bill altogether. Um, and then in doing that, you'd also get a few extra benefits. Um, and it's kind of, it's like I mentioned earlier, uh, your solar payment has an end date, your electric bill doesn't, and after your solar payment ends, you've still got your solar that's sitting there producing energy and SRX for you. Um, additionally, your solar payment will never go up. It's fixed for the, the term of the loan, unlike your power bill, which goes up when energy prices go up. Um, and then lastly, uh, your solar payment will get you those passively generated SRX, uh, which your electric bill will not. Um, so uh, that's it on my end of the presentation here. So uh, it looks like we'll be jumping into some Q&A. Um, and then after that, we will yeah. move into... Yeah. Um, if we could have, like, if Cam or David, based on some of the questions we're getting in, if either of you could pull up, like, a sample project that we did recently that compares loan amount to power bill amount, um, it looks like we have some um, questions in that direction. Uh, the first question, which I see some questions are going into the chat, so I'm going to do those second, guys. Uh, if you want to feed them into Q&A, we can actually record the answers. Um, so I'm going to start with Jackie's question. Is there a way to receive the tax rebate for solar if somebody has a low income and pays no federal tax? Otherwise, the cost pushes the ROI out another seven years. Who wants to take that one? Yeah, I can address that. That's that's a common criticism of the tax credit model. Um, a lot of there's been a lot of talks of changing it into a rebate or um, a refundable tax credit versus a non refundable tax credit, and that that would allow non for profits to reap that benefit. And, and like you said, if someone has low or no tax liability, allow them to take that effect for investing in solar. But currently, there. It is, is only tied to your tax liability. So you, you could talk about your own personal situation with a tax professional would be the best way to answer that. But from what you're saying now, it, it sounds like you would not be able to reap the full benefit of the tax credit if you don't have sufficient tax liability. We have a, another question. Uh, what can we do to get more solar panels manufactured in PA if we have the material resources? Can we match this up with displaced coal miners and steel workers? Is PA or the federal government doing anything to promote this? Does Biden's program contain anything to promote this? Yeah, I can answer part of that, I think. Um, the biggest way to get solar panels manufactured in PA is to keep buying solar panels. If there's more demand domestically, then uh, the market will respond to by increasing supply domestically. Um, and that, that's a great, a great, we have a lot of, of, of industry here, perhaps abandoned industry, that would be great places for um, solar panel manufacturing. There's a big solar panel plant in Toledo, Ohio. So there's no reason we can't have one in, nearby in, in PA. Um, is the PA or federal government doing anything to promote this? Gosh, 
I, I'm not sure exactly if there's anything specifically um, tied to that. You know, Cam, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't really have any examples of like legislation that's being pushed uh, specifically for getting solar panels to be manufactured in PA. Um, I know there's a lot of discussion of what's called green collar jobs. Um, and green collar jobs include anything from, you know, it's, it's not just manufacturing solar, but it's also installing solar. Um, and in, in terms of, you know, just general green collar jobs, not specifically solar panel manufacturing, uh, there is a lot being done uh, to, to promote that industry, both federally and on the state level. Um, and just really, like David said in the beginning, you know, please write your rep, uh, your state rep, because they're the ones that control that AEPS. Um, and that a AEPS has a big impact on the solar industry. Um, and when the solar industry grows, so do those green collar jobs. Um, so with respect to that, um, really the same answer there, write your reps. They're the ones that will make that decision in the end. I would add that there is a possibility to match up potential material resources here in Pennsylvania, like steel uh, to these plants, much like Ohio, as David mentioned. Um, we are actually talking to a steel plant right now, um, looking to put solar on their roof. And there are materials that we have right here in Pennsylvania from local businesses and a network there, but there are things like silica and other precious metals that uh, would be hard to source in Pennsylvania. But we can look into that more for you, Joan, um, as far as the Biden program. That's fairly recent and we're still picking that apart and understanding what that's gonna look like, but we can get back to you with an update. Um, so our next question here is regarding that sample project. I was hoping uh, one of my Infinity dudes would pull up. The question is what would my monthly bills look like assuming I financed? Just an example with fake numbers is fine. Um, want to know what I'm paying West Penn Power versus what SREC credits and um, solar payment would look like. Sure, yeah, I can take that one. Uh, now, I always tell clients, I hate to say this to them, but it is very situationally based. So I think fake numbers would probably be the most appropriate to go with here just because you know every situation is different. And um, you know I don't wanna make any sweeping generalizations, but um, assuming that we are able to install a solar system large enough to cover your entire energy spend, uh, your power bill would be reduced to just uh, the customer charge. Um, and that actually depends on what um, electric company you're with, whether it's West Penn Power, PPNL, et cetera. Uh, usually it's like a five to 10, maybe 15, $20 charge uh, that goes on there every month just for them maintaining the infrastructure. Uh, but assuming that you financed a solar system and then that solar system was large enough to cover your yearly energy spend, um, you'd essentially be replacing the vast majority of your power bill uh, with that solar payment. Um, yeah, I see somebody just typed in there, the West Penn Power grid connection fee is $7.95 a month um, in State College. So uh, you'd be able to reduce everything on your bill uh, that is a per kilowatt hour charge. Um, but then aside from that, like the customer charge, you'd still have $7.95 going to West Penn Power for the uh, maintenance of the infrastructure. Um, but you'd also be getting all your electricity from solar um, and then handling that with your monthly payment that would stay fixed every month rather than going up when you use more or when rates go up. Does that make sense? I think the process makes sense, but I think Mindy's looking for specifically a comparison of a certain amount of kilowatts usage versus the solar payment to offset that solar. So um, if somebody could dig into that and then maybe we could give David the next question. Um, I think a, as a client sample would be good. Uh, there's a file I think from when we talked about solar financing a while back where I did an example. So maybe that's a place to look, Cam. Um, 
but yeah, like Cam said, everybody's situation is different because everybody uses a different amount of power and everybody has a, a different level of energy efficiency in their home. So while this would fluctuate greatly, we could provide a sample later in the session. Um, and maybe we do that in Q&A number two. And while Blake's presenting, we can dig that up. But uh, moving on to the next one for now. How does the SREC work? Do you actually get payments from the electric company? Yeah, good question. Um, no. <laughs> you when, when you sign up for a system for Infinity, we, we will register you in a marketplace. Um, and then that market, and then your microinverters will track how many SRECs you accrue, and that will be reflected in this marketplace. And then you give the order. You can track the price there live. You give the order when you want to sell. And then the marketplace charges, I think, like a 6% commission or something on top of that. And then uh, they will be purchased and you'll be paid that amount. And then kind of along the same line of the next question, are future SREX guaranteed? The price isn't guaranteed. The price fluctuates um, based on policy. There's a bid every few months. And you can see that on the uh, thing called srectrade.com. Google that and you'll, you'll find the landing site for that. Um, but an SREC, once you accrue an SREC, it is valid to be sold for three years. So you can sell that at a high point. You can sell that at a low point based on the market. It's kind of up to you when you sell those and how you accrue them. But after three years, if you don't sell them, they are no longer valid. They just they go away. So that's something to keep in mind. They have an expiration date. And they're also timestamped per year. If you look at the SREC trade marketplace, you'll see two prices, one for 2020, one for 2021, uh, and so forth. So current ones are usually worth more than prior year ones, but not, not by much. I think it's valid to also mention that when you're evaluating uh, competing solar quotes, if you are shopping for solar right now, uh, there are some companies that want to keep your SRX and they'll reduce the basis of cost to you up front. Um, you definitely want to check within your proposal whether you get to keep your SRX or where the company installing is going to keep your SRX and understand the cost benefit, pros and cons. Um, here at Infinity, we want you to keep your SRX because they could be potentially worth more later, and that's your investment. Um, some com companies operate differently, and it's something to look out for as you're uh, shopping for solar and just to be aware of. Yeah, good point, Candace. Uh, how long do solar panels last without replacement or repair? I believe this anonymous attendee is talking about uh, engineered life. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> most panels are warranted from the manufacturer for 25 years. That means like if hail hits them, if a windstorm damages them, uh, they're guaranteed to produce and work for 25 years. Um, they also carry a production guarantee which it's kind of an unfortunate sake of the technology, but so such as the way it works, uh, solar panels degrade over time. They drop about a half to a quarter, a quarter to half percent of efficiency lost each year just due to age. Um, but the, in the fine print of the specific panel, they'll call out exactly what they will produce after 25 or 30 years. And if they are in void of that, you can claim warranty and get them get them replaced. Well, that's just their warranty life. Their serviceable life is unknown because, I mean, there are panels that far exceed their warranty life. They'll just produce less and less as time goes on, but they should work just fine. That's, I don't think we've hit uh, a time yet where we really know how long they'll last. I still see solar panels up in various areas when I drive down the freeway that are like from the Carter administration. I don't know what they're yeah, producing, yeah. But they're still out there. They're doing something. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're very robust, designed to last a long time. Um, we have a question here. Do tax credits apply to only new systems, not upgrades to existing systems, even if you're adding capacity? Yeah, Cam, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you if you upgrade your system as in you add new panels to it and increase the system kilowatt size in the eyes of the government and the utility that is a new system. So that cost would be eligible for the tax credit. Is that how you understand it, Cam? Yep, that's true. Um, 
that uh, add on to your system would be considered a project in its own right. Um, and so you would therefore get the tax credit amount for that year on that add on. Now, if you were just replacing equipment, um, the, it really comes down to, I think, of in the utilities side, does the kilowatt system size change? So it's like, say you replace a few panels and they have a higher wattage, then that would be eligible. But um, if you're just replacing some of the equipment and not upgrading or adding, not sure. That'd be, well, we have to look into that for you. Do the tax credit apply to um, residential storage as well? And let's add the question EV charger in here as well, because I know both of those are interesting topics we get a lot. I can handle that one. Um, so the tax credit, and that's the 26% tax credit, would apply to uh, residential energy storage um, with the caveat that that storage, so those batteries have to be powered by solar. Um, so you wouldn't be able to take the tax credit on, say, if you got a battery um, and no solar or a battery and a generator, but no solar, um, you'd be able to take those tax credits on the, on the uh, battery, excuse me, only if you bundle it with solar and those batteries are charged by solar. What if you add panels and the battery as part of your upgrade? Yeah, as long as the batteries are charged by solar, you'd be able to take the tax credit on them. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding of it. Mm -hmm. And then EV chargers, like Candace mentioned, there's also a tax credit available for um, having an EV charger installed at your home. 30%, I believe. Of yep. system cost. That's right. Uh, the next question is a clarity question uh, going back to offsetting your energy bill um, and comparing it to uh, a finance payment. Are, is there any chance the monthly bill will actually go down because of SREC credit value? If they're 100% offsetting, what is the chance of that? Do we see that commonly? Yep, so that's definitely possible. Um, and actually, since Mindy's last question, I was able to reference um, one of our other clients. I won't mention any names, of course, but uh, so I believe that client, uh, their yearly usage was around 18 to 19,000 kilowatt hours. Um, we were able to get a full offset of their, um, of their, of their uh, yearly energy consumption. Um, and the finance payment for that system uh, was around 225 a month. Now, that's compared to uh, our, this client in particular was seeing energy bills up around 300 range for a lot of uh, the months where he had, I mean, obviously your power bill is going to fluctuate. Um, and I think it was around, you know, it was between like 180 to 300. Um, but that, that power, um, those power bills would fluctuate. Um, but compare that to the finance payment, which is at 225, and that would not move um, depending on your usage. And it would also not go up over time um, as electric rates went up. And, and so I mean, that's not accounting for uh, the SREC credits, which are a separate trade, which I think is important to know. Yeah, exactly. So um, even though we might be able to get a solar payment that is lower than your power bill, uh, that solar payment also has the benefit of giving you those SRECs, which are passively generated. Um, and if you actually take those into account, it is pretty often the case that uh, it's a lot cheaper uh, per year than just paying your power bill. So I think there is an economy of scale to that, Mindy. Uh, my house is fairly small and not very energy efficient. My average payment uh, for power throughout the year between like 80 and 140. So it would probably be more difficult based on um, roof space and low power usage and efficient appliances for me to really probably reap the full benefit in my situation. But the average home in state college and outside areas, this is, it's very possible for you to have a lower solar financing payment than your power bill would be once you average it over the year. Especially comes into play with as you get closer to Pittsburgh in the Duquesne Light territory, um, 
notoriously higher rates than other uh, electric providers. So it's very common to be able to, although it's, it's, a, it's a shame to pay more for electricity, it makes going solar more attractive when you have high electricity rates. Uh, we have a question here. One SREC gets created for each one megawatt hour of electricity, correct? Correct. 1,000 kilowatt hours and one megawatt hour equals one SREC. Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh, the next two are related, so I'm going to combine them. What happens at the end of the life of panels? Even if not recycled fully, do the environmental benefits stop away other forms of dirty energy? And can solar panels be recycled? Yeah, yeah, they can. Um, Infinity, which you might not know, we're, we're a member of a cooperative of um, mission-focused green energy companies across the United States called Amicus, which um, helped spawn the Clean Energy Credit Union, which I'm sure Blake might mention down the road. But Amicus has some connections to, to recycle solar panels when they're at the end of life. And you can extract aluminum, glass, precious metals, silica, um, and put those to, to new uses. It's not, it's, been, it's a growing practice. We need to be recycling more. And I think as we solarize more and solar grows in popularity, there'll be more of a demand for that recycling service, but absolutely. Uh, we actually have a video of it on Facebook. If you scroll through our posts a while yeah. back of a plant uh, actively recycling a panel in Australia, uh, the technology is live and happening across the world and what they produce per solar panel of how much can be recycled. Um, so it's a really cool statistic on our Facebook page. If you have Facebook, uh, I definitely recommend scrolling back through our posts maybe a month or two and, and taking a look at that. Um, I'm gonna skip to the chat because I see a rogue question. Does Infinity have a range of solar panel types or just one type they sell and install? Yeah, we have a range. Um, we have a couple different options for residential systems and then uh, from, from We have an American-made brand. We have a, a brand made off sea, overseas. We have some higher efficiency panels. We have some higher wattage panels. We have some budget panels. Um, we try to stock and fit the best option for each client. And then we also uh, install larger panels that wouldn't really fit on, wouldn't fit too many on a roof when we have commercial installations or installations that go on the ground. But yeah, a, a good suite of options. And that actually benefits as we talk about the supply chain of solar panels right now and the strain on materials post, I don't wanna say post COVID, during COVID, <laughs> as we continue through this journey together. Um, it allows us, unlike some companies, to pivot from material to material as the market shifts to ensure that we have stable and dependable prices. And we have warehouse space where when we see something good that we think is gonna go up or the cooperative has given us the flag that we should see increases soon, we stock up. We make sure that we can meet our promises with our proposals. And I'm really proud of our team for always being on top of that because you just don't see it everywhere. Um, when you look across the industry, it's not something some companies have the opportunity uh, to have that type of communication within a co-op and understand what's going to be happening in the market and act eff effectively. So um, that's something to note. Uh, we have our next question. Tax credits only apply to grid tied slash interactive? Question mark. Yeah, so those, the tax credit would apply uh, to any solar, whether it's off grid or grid tied. Awesome. Uh, next question, besides the Clean Energy Credit Union, which local banks, if any, are most likely to give prospective buyers either low rates or a great or amount of a HELOC loan? Uh, I can answer that real quick as someone who is currently negotiating with our local banks. Uh, you know, they're, we're at historic low interest rates for a lot of our construction HELOC, uh, I think it's 403 something the type of loan that they're offering. So there's a lot of options out there. I encourage you to talk to the bank that you currently use because that's always a good option. Um, you can talk to local credit unions that may work with Penn State employees and might be um, easier to access in the region. I can say that we've approached First Citizens Bank and they've been very flexible in trying to create a custom product for solar locally. So I'm excited to see where that product lands. Um, just like anything in banking, it takes a while to vet, uh, vet everything, cross all the T's, dot all the I's, but I think we're close there in creating a custom solar project locally. Um, and we hope to see more of that. But 
I, I think your first step is to check the bank you currently bank at. Uh, and then you can start shopping around online to kind of see what HELOC loan rates are. They're going to be pretty close um, just because there's a lot of similar uh, similar rates out there based on the Fed, based on other factors. Um, but I will say that the interest rates of leveraging the solar materials, which Clean Energy Credit Union does, uh, with the ability, without stealing Blake's thunder, with the ability to kind of um, have a more complex product where you're paying it down after you get your tax credit, uh, gives you a little bit of an advantage over a traditional HELOC, depending what your situation is. Got three more, and then we're going to move on to Blake. Um, can the 30% EV charger credit apply if you just install a NEMA 14 50 outlet rather than a specific charger. That one's over my head. Anybody on the panel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Go ahead, Kim. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so if you install a NEMA 1450 outlet, uh, since that is technically equipment that will uh, participate in charging an EV, you would be able to get uh, the tax credit on that NEMA 1450 outlet. Thanks, Kim. If there are three times as many homeowners receiving SRECs, does the increased supply mean that the rates at auction will go down? Yeah, yeah possibly. And we haven't seen that happen yet, um, mainly because the supply in the PA marketplace has been dwindling significantly as Ohio systems are phased out. But once they're all phased out, and as more people solarize in Pennsylvania, the SREC marketplace, the price could go down and supply goes up. And one way to fight that is to increase the demand through policy changes. That's why we keep harping on, we need that AEPS to go up. That would drive a lot of investment in solar and PA and specifically drive up as road prices. We'd all be rich. We'd all be rich. We'd all be rich. <laughs> <laughs> in spirit and financially. Um, Okay, last question. Do you have an idea of an average increase in sales price of houses in our area with solar arrays? Very complex question. Um, I think the official answer before anybody jumps on this one is no, we don't have reported data in our area. Um, we anecdotally know the answers from past clients that move out of the area, but we do not have an official statement. We are not in line with many of the states that have been uh, seeing a larger solar market share. Um, does anybody else have perspective that they want to add to that? Yeah, as of right now, Candice, um, we don't have uh, an official line for that. And the reason, the reason for that is because solar is not yet included um, in, the, uh, in the analysis that's performed by real estate appraisers. Um, so while there is uh, change is coming, um, and eventually that will be included in the appraisal. Uh, it's not currently, so we try not to make any, you know, specific statements about it uh, at this point. Although in the future we will probably be able to. All right. We're going to close the q and I'm going to stop share for a minute and I'm going to make uh, Blake the host so that he can share his slides. And when you're done, Blake, you can just put it back my way. We will have the Kahoot right after uh, the Q&A with Blake. Um, so hold on for that. Doing a quick sound check. Can you all hear me okay? Great. So again, my name is Blake. I am a volunteer board member for Clean Energy Credit Union. And I love uh, volunteering my time there because I love its mission. I love what it's doing. Clean Energy Credit Union, we're an online only. So we don't have any brick and mortar branches. Um, federally chartered credit union. And all we do are loans for clean energy, energy saving projects. So you cannot get a quote unquote normal loan with us. It's got to be for a project that's a green home improvement or something that's 
high energy efficiency or like you can get an auto loan, but it has to be for an electric vehicle, for example. So that's all that we focus on. And some you may or may not know, but credit unions provide the same services as banks, but they're different in a few respects. Uh, first and foremost, they're not for profit financial services cooperatives that are owned and governed by their members. So a bank's reason for existence is to maximize profit for stockholders. A credit union's reason for existence is to serve its members and to fulfill its mission. Our vision is a world where everyone can participate in the clean energy movement, and we help to bring about that vision in two ways. One is we want to make it easier for everyone to afford to use clean energy or to save energy by offering loans with the very best terms anywhere in the country for these types of projects. And then two, for clean energy geeks like me, uh, or like many of us on, on this call, we've already got solar panels, already drive an electric vehicle, ride our bike, have an energy efficient home. But what else can we do? Well, we can put our money into somewhere like Clean Energy Ukrainian, where the money is only used to help someone else afford to pursue their energy saving or clean energy project. And money that's deposited in a checking account, savings account at Clean Energy Ukrainian, it's federally insured, uh, just like it would be at Wells Fargo or Bank of America or, or Chase. Another difference between credit unions and banks is that banks can serve the general public, credit unions cannot. They serve either the people who live in a certain geography or the people who work at a certain group of employers, or in the case of clean energy credit unions, it's people who are members of certain organizations. And the organizations that have joined uh, are, it's called a field of membership, so far listed here on the screen. They're usually groups of fellow environmentalists, clean energy geeks, uh, but two that Invinity's customers often join in order to uh, get a loan from Clean Edge Crane are American Solar Energy Society, which has been around since the 1950s, which is pretty crazy uh, given you know, how long solar um, has been around. And then it costs $10 to join American Solar Energy Society, or it's actually free to join Solar United Neighbors. And I've heard that Solar United Neighbors may be coming to Pennsylvania soon, um, but either of those are very easy to join. Once you're a member of one of those organizations, then everyone in your family, everyone in your household are eligible to join Clean Energy Credit Union, and you don't need to maintain a membership in one of these organizations like Solar United Neighbors uh, on an ongoing basis after you've joined Clean Energy Credit Union. So it's pretty easy. There's an extra step, but it's pretty easy to be able to join Clean Energy Credit Union. Our loan products right now are, are shown here on the screen. The uh, main one we're focusing on uh, tonight is residential solar PV systems, uh, loans for those. We also do green home improvement loans that can be used for battery only projects. For example, if you already have a solar system and you want to borrow in order to just to put batteries on your home. Uh, these are some fun photos that our members have sent in uh, in front of their in front of their projects. We love those. To describe the type of uh, customized loan product that we offer for solar and uh, to piggyback on what Candice was saying earlier, one of the reasons we started Clean Energy Credit Union is because there aren't enough banks and credit unions. There's over 10,000 of them in the United States, but there aren't enough of them creating a customized loan product that's good for solar or for geothermal heat pumps or for other green home improvements. If, the more that they hear people asking for them, the more motivated they'll be to do so. We're also training 50 other credit unions how to do, uh, how to create and, and do solar lending. Um, but if they hear from you asking, you know, whoever your current Bank or credit union is that they hear you asking for it. That'll help motivate them to create something because a home equity line of credit isn't the perfect fit. It can be good and it's got its pros and cons. But we created a a loan that is a perfect fit um, and that's been popular for the last 15 years in the solar industry. And it's called a, a combo loan. It's actually two loans. The first loan is intended to float the 26% tax credit. So it's intended to float that amount of money until after you get the tax credit, and then you use the tax credit to pay down that portion of the loan. And then the other 74% is in a long-term loan that's 12, 15, or 20 years. And together they make the combo loan and can offer 100% financing, no money down, in order to get a solar PV system. The short-term loan, or sometimes people call it the tax credit loan, uh, there's no principal or, or interest payments on it. It's a single, what's called a balloon loan. So there's one single payment that's due at the end in either 12 or 18 months. It's just intended to float the tax credit amount past next April when you'll do your tax filing. But it's a single payment of principal plus whatever, however much interest has accrued. Uh, and then you make a single payment with the tax credit that you get to pay off that, that tax credit loan. And then the long-term loan is fixed monthly payments of principal and interest, ju just like your mortgage payments. So you're making the same fixed payment every month uh, over the course of 12, 15, or 20 years. 
and that's gradually paying down your 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 loan balance to pay it off in the term. Uh, this schematic here it just shows that uh, kind of a graphical representation of it. You start making monthly payments when your solar system installation is complete. Then after 12 or 18 months, you make a, a balloon payment of, of however much interest accrues plus the tax credit amount. And then you continue making uh, monthly payments until your uh, full principal amount is paid off. This table here shows our loan terms. We have rates as low as 4.99% for the tax credit loan. We have rates as low as 4.99% to 5.49% on our long-term loans, depending on whether it's 12, 15, or 20 years. The best credit scores get those lowest rates. If someone has a lower credit score, we're a nonprofit, we want really badly to make that loan to you. The interest rate, interest rate might be a little bit higher, but we don't have a minimum credit score that's required for our loans. We'll try really hard to approve all loans, but lower credit scores do get do get better interest rates. The uh, each, none of these loans have a prepayment penalty. So if you get your solar system installed in December and then you take your tax credit in April, you can pay off that tax credit loan in six months and you'll only be paying for six months worth of interest. The same thing with the long-term loan. So that if for whatever reason uh, you want to pay off that, that 15 or 20 year loan early within just a few years, you can and there's no prepayment penalty. All of our rates include a 2% discount, assuming everybody's gonna sign up for automatic loan payments. Um, we've done over 5,000 loans. Everybody sign, signed up for automatic loan payments. If you don't like automatic loan payments, we're probably not a good fit for you because then that 2% discount goes away. Uh, we can do projects up to $90,000. And the long-term loan, you can't use just a long-term loan to finance 100% of the project. You can actually only use a long-term loan to finance up to 80%. So the combo loan needs to be used, both of those loans together, in order to finance the, the total uh, contract amount, but both of those together can add up to 100% uh, loan to value or the total the total contract amount. And then all of our rates for all of our loan types are always available and, and, and publicly uh, published uh, on our website, uh, link down there at the bottom. Collateral, this was mentioned earlier, our loans only, uh, the only collateral they use is the solar equipment themselves. So we, we it's called we perfect a security interest or we, we put it on public notice that we uh, have a security interest in the project equipment by doing what's called a UCC filing. Those are quite common. The UCC filings are not a lien on your real estate, so they won't encumber the equity in your home. They won't prevent you from getting a second mortgage or refinancing your first mortgage. Um, you, you, you're able to get those. And we've had literally hundreds of members over the last two years while mortgage rates were low. Uh, refinance their first mortgage and get second mortgage and we're betting a thousand. We have a perfect record of helping all of our members to successfully refinance or get a second mortgage whenever they want to. Uh, we can assist with that. Sometimes a mortgage company wants us to sign what's called a subordination agreement, just saying that our loan, it doesn't have a lien on the home or, or subordinating our loan to the mortgage company. We can do that. There's a, a $75 fee for it, but just want to make sure that everybody knows these are not home equity loans. They don't encumber your equity. They don't prevent you from refinancing your first mortgage or getting a second mortgage. In terms of fees, we charge a $25 processing fee per loan. So if you get a full combo loan, that'd be $50. Then we pay, we, we charge a flat fee of either $100 or $350 for Pennsylvania uh, for a UCC filing. And it kind of depends on the amount of your loan. Um, it depends on your county but it's either 100 or 350. Our goal is not to make any money off of that, but just to pass through the cost of the UCC filings. And then we don't have any what's called dealer fees or seller's points. Those are pretty prevalent um, throughout the solar industry, uh, whereby you might find a solar installer offering a 0.99% loan. They're buying down that interest rate with seller's points on your behalf, and then they need to recoup those costs by making your, uh, your generally your, your a proposal price more expensive in order to cover those costs. Um, that's that's not what we do with all our, our standard loans. So th everything's transparent. You can see what our fees are. The loan application process, um, we do have a one pager that we can follow up and send out to anyone who's interested that says the information you need to get, what the exact steps are, but here's a very condensed version. Uh, Infinity can initiate a loan application on your behalf and just, just get it started through our online portal. Then you receive an automated email from that portal saying, Invidity has initiated the loan application for you. You click here and complete the rest of it. Um, then you complete your the, the loan application and it can give you a, what's called instant decision. 
um, based on your credit score and your income. Um, it, it'll either, I'd say 80% of our applicants get instantly pre-approved. The other 20%, we just need to review them. It takes a day or two. Once you get pre-approved, we ask you to upload pay stubs or tax returns or proof of income, a copy of your driver's license and avoided check. Then uh, you can wait to see you know, if you get approved for a loan uh, and what the interest rates are before you decide whether or not you want to join the credit union. But after you're pre-approved, then it's time to join the credit union in order to, to, to get fully approved for a loan. Infinity will upload your project documents for you, and then we can fully approve you. And once you're fully approved, Nvidia can install your system. Uh, then when they tell us they've installed your system and they invoice us for the two loans, you just have to sign those loan documents. And then you begin making monthly payments uh, within 30 days after we pay Nvidia after your solar system is installed. Becoming a member is very easy. Um, once you join one of those organizations that I mentioned earlier, you go to our website, you click join, uh, you, you fill out an online membership application process, uh, 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 an online membership application, you'll have to enter your social security number, driver's license number, and a few other things. You then have to sign what's called an account card, um, which we'll send to you via DocuSign, and then you make a minimum $5 deposit, and then you are a member of the credit union, which is all part of the process of getting a loan. And then last, I'm just going to mention that, you know, we also have checking accounts and savings accounts. And a lot of people who get solar loans with us or electric vehicle loans, they say, hey, I love the idea of having my money be federally insured, but also supporting other people who want to pursue projects like this. And we've got, you know, 1% interest rate as our maximum interest rate on our checking accounts. Uh, we've got debit cards with a cool clean energy uh, theme that you can see there. We've got mobile app, online banking app. We don't have any brick and mortar branches, so everything is taken care of online with snazzy software, but we've got really good deposit rates, partly because brick and mortar branches are very expensive and all that overhead savings, we pass it through to members in the form of better loan rates and the form of better deposit rates. And sorry, I tried to go through that very quickly because I know we're running short on time, but I'm available for questions here, or you can always uh, email us or contact us through our website or, or my email address is right here. Thanks everybody for listening. Mike, if you want to just make me the host real quick, we can um, get to the Q&A section. I see some questions. Will do. First question here, uh, where does the capital from for CECU come from, not from deposits from? Right, so a credit union has to capitalize itself. Um, banks do that with, uh, they're selling stock to stockholders. Credit unions have to do that either through donations or through retained earnings. And since we're a relatively new credit union, we don't have a lot of retained earnings. So we've benefited from a little over 3 million in uh, donations, uh, a lot from Enviro supporters, clean energy geeks like me. Uh, most of it has come from environmental foundations like the Hewlett Foundation is our largest supporter. Uh, they give us a $1 million donation. So it, the short answer is it comes primarily from donations. And then the donations uh, allow us to meet regulatory requirements to then accept deposits from our members, uh, opening checking accounts and savings accounts. And all of that combined is what we use to make the loans. Next question is, would both loans be at the same interest rate and are both fixed rates? Both of the rates are fixed the rates can be different. So if you get a 12 month loan for the tax credit loan and then a 20 year loan for the long-term loan, uh, they're more likely going to be different. But if you get a, a, a 12 year loan and a 12 month loan, uh, there, there's a good chance that they could be the same which are our lowest rate of 4.99%, but they're both, they're fixed. And all the interest rates that we advertise include the 2% interest rate discount that you get for signing up for automatic loan payments. So that's already built into what, what I showed and what's, what's on our uh, website. All right, last chance to get in any more questions. I'm not yeah. seeing any more. I have a question um, Blake, Without further ado. Did you hear me? Go for it, David. Yeah, so kind of referencing earlier in our presentation, what have the experiences of your clients been, Blake, 
if their tax credit and the 26th per amount loan exceeds their tax liability. So they can't make that full balloon payment when they get their tax credit. They have to wait until the next year. Yep. We do have what's, what's called a workout loan, uh, a three or five year option to extend mm -hmm. that if you aren't able to take advantage of the tax credit. So, mm -hmm. you know, the goal is if you're going to get that tax credit loan, you want to make sure you talk to a tax advisor that you can take advantage of the tax credit. But we know that that strange, that strange things happen and unexpected things happen with tax returns. Uh, so we're not for profit. Our goal is to help out our members. And if somebody doesn't have the tax credit amount or the amount otherwise, we actually had a few members say, you know what, I forgot and I just went and I used my tax credit and I bought a new car with it. Um, that's okay. We can still offer a workout loan. That's not the intention. Um, but again, we're not for profit. We want to help our members. So we will find a way to, to help you come up with a, with a different payment plan or get one of those three or five year workout loans. Great question. Uh, if my rate is 4.5% with the 2% discount, does that make my rate 2.5%? Uh, no, the 2% rate discount that I mentioned, uh, all the rates that we advertise, they include a 2% rate discount if you sign up for automatic loan payments. So if you see the rates that were on the, the screen earlier, if you see the rates that are on our website, or if you get pre-approved and we say, here are the rates that you're pre-approved for, we'll always have a footnote that say that these rates already include a 2% rate discount under the assumption that you're gonna sign up for automatic loan payments, um, saving the paper statements and not having to snail mail checks and you know just using those trees and those emissions to send everything in the mail is kind of antithetical to our environmental ethos. So that's why. Oh, I like that. I actually have another right. question, Blake. I think I've asked you this on my own, but I think it would be good for our members to, to hear too. Um, your, your business model, the model of, of the combo loan is certainly built around federal policy. I'm just kind of curious, like how nimble is the credit union to adjusting to that? As most of our members are, are probably aware that the tax credit is certainly not permanent now and it could go down or it could be extended. I'm just curious what the credit union's plans are for that. Yep. So the tax credit used to be 30%. And we were pretty nimble in changing it so that the tax credit loan could be 26% instead of 30%. That's a good example. We're, we're seeing this current 26% tax credit doesn't expire until the end of next year. Then it's supposed to step down. But we're really excited that in the um, reconciliation bill is an extension of the tax credit. Hopefully that'll happen for even longer. That would be great. And we're also uh, part of lobbying efforts to try to make that, as you mentioned earlier, direct pay option so that like, well, like we're a low income designated credit union, which means that more than half of our members are low income folks. And it's a lot harder for them to take the tax credit if they don't have enough tax liability to do so. So on behalf of our members who are low income, who may have a harder time taking those tax credits, that direct pay would be great because then it doesn't matter what your income is. It doesn't matter how much tax liability you have. If you don't have enough tax liability, you would get a fully refundable amount. And we're hoping that that's going to happen as part of this reconciliation bill. And actually everybody can help out by lobbying your, your Congress people about that and telling them that the direct pay option for uh, solar tax credit is important to you. But even if that happens, I think the tax credit loan will be helpful because it'll still take some time for that to be processed and for that money to come back. And that tax credit loan will pay a, uh, play, a, play an important role in, in, in floating that amount until um, even a direct pay option comes back to the borrower. Mm -hmm. All right. Um Time to play Kahoot. This is kind of testing your knowledge. I, I know that many of you are still with us. Um, we're hoping that you can play the game. You have a chance to win a $250 uh, gift card to a local business of your choice. Uh, we're ready to get going. And I'm gonna share screen real quick. Ah, uh, Blake, chiming out. Thank you so much to Blake and the Pinter Community for joining us. That was awesome content, awesome presentation. Really happy to have him join us. Thank you so much. Oh, I can't share screen anymore. Not sure. Yeah, Candace, is. how do I how do I give it back to you? Um, back. Let's There's see. three dots in the right hand corner uh, of my screen, and you can say make host. Yeah, see those. Very strange. 
but I can see also I can't leave. It just gives the button that says end instead of leave, and I don't want to end it for you. So I don't know. So Blake. Maybe try at the bottom of the screen, there's participants, click participants, hit panelists, and then next to Candace's name, more. Great idea, let's try that. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't give one to say. There we go. Thank you, Cam. Sure. Oh, I guess I'm the host. I'll make Candace host. Oops. I mean, I mean, I'm potato. <laughs> appreciate that, Blake. Yep. Sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah, Bye, y'all. Thank you, Blake. I am not going to share the crazy sound. So uh, if you're still with us, um, the key is to join on another device or on a different window, www.kahoot.it, and then put in this game pin. And Infinity employees are not eligible for this prize. Oh. Don't have any participants yet. Maybe has any 50 bucks. How could you not want to play? Let's go. It's fun. Luke R. Hmm. There's an identity employee named Luke R. Give you guys a couple more minutes to get set up. So just putting in your browser, kahoot.it. Your chances are good so far. Your chances are really good. Yeah, and this in this quick 30 seconds here, Candace, how just mention again how great was it to have Blake tonight? He's a little modest in his presentation. Blake actually um, founded one of the most well-known and well-respected solar companies in the, in the United States, Namaste Solar in Colorado. And he also oh, was he's a, that uh, Blake? Yeah, that Blake. And he's oh. also a contributing member to founding the Amicus Cooperative, which Vinny's a part of. So Blake's just an, a wealth of knowledge, and we're very happy to have him with us tonight. I want to make sure you all knew how famous he is. <laughs> yeah, and just to point out how modest he is, he referred to himself as what the volunteer uh, board member. No, he's pretty much the CEO of Clean Energy Credit Union. So, very grateful for him coming out tonight. Absolutely. Um... Also, T. Roy Jenkins is the one to beat. Uh, I know there's some comments in the chat. I believe he won last time and oh. donated his winnings to charity. So uh, something to consider. Uh, not only is Kahoot Quiz about getting the answers correct, it's also doing it in the quickest amount of time. So got to be the fastest and got to be right to win this game. Not a ton of questions, so it's not going to take a lot of time once we get going. Uh, I'm going to get started so we can be respectful of everybody's time. When does your solar payment go up? When electric rates go up? When the sun is shining? At night? Never. Seems like most of you got that right. That's right, never. Uh, your solar payment will stay fixed and consistent if you do finance your solar, much like Blake said, Kim said, David was saying. Um, you know, electric rates do go up on the other hand, so that's something to consider in the math equation. Oh, looks like Tira Jenkins is starting in the lead. Uh, inching behind, pretty close. We got Mindy, Sean, and Pam. Still time. When does your solar payment end? After the term of your choice? I'm not sure. It's like an electric bill, never. When I say it does. That's right, you have uh, control of the term of your loan. I know that Blake just listed off a bunch of options. Um, 
I believe HELOC is set up the same, but you are in control based on how much you want to pay of what the term of your loan is. Um, there's three options at Clean Energy Credit Union, if you were to go back to those slides, which this is recorded. You can go back to those slides uh, after the presentation. Sean, moving up. Which is true of your electric bill? Your electric bill never goes up. Your electric bill has an end date. Your electric bill will go up, never ends, and you don't even get the SREX. Your electric bill gets you SREX passively. That's right. Your electric bill will continue to go up. We just saw some temporary increases this past summer. Uh, that we have a blog post about on our website, Infinity.com under Infinity News. Uh, you can look up what your increase actually was if, you're, if your power bill seemed a little high this summer. Um, and you're always going to have a power bill if you don't have solar. And you do not get the SREX if, unless you have solar. So uh, there's a couple of things there to consider. Looks like Mindy. Mm. Sean's on fire. T. Roy Jenkins still in the lead. Um, T. Roy Jenkins also made a comment, or no, maybe maybe Andy made a comment. Uh, if you pay off your solar loan early, I guess uh, it is kind of uh, on your own terms also. So technically correct as well. How do I claim the federal income tax credit? The IRS will make sure to add the tax credit to my tax return. The IRS will send me an envelope of cash. I file IRS form 5695. Infinity takes the tax credit on your behalf, discounting the system cost. Yeah, that is the official IRS form that you would file. Um, so that's exciting. I see almost everybody got that correct. Infinity is not a company that would uh, roll that into your solar proposal and make that some sort of reduction of cost. Um, that is something that you would get when you file your taxes with that form. Mindy, taking the lead. Congratulations, Mindy. What can I do to fight climate change and help solarize Pennsylvania? Write your congressperson to increase the PAAEPS beyond 0.5% for solar, become a solar champion, install a solar array in your own home, or all of the above. All of the above is correct. So now we're gonna see where we landed. In third place, we have Mindy. Second place, Andres Portero. And in first place, we have T. Roy Jenkins. Congratulations. So if you are T. Roy Jenkins, I believe I know who you are, but please email cbradley at infinity.com um, and let me know what local business you would like to be a patron at, and I can mail you. All right, so uh, last thing, you know, we, we mentioned a couple of things uh, at the end there about what you can do to be a solar champion. Um, you can sign up to talk to our solar team, no pressure. Uh, some of them are here today. We also have other members of our sales team uh, to get additional personal questions answered that are specific to your situation, to investigate your site for solar, talk about solar financing, um, talk about if it's the right time for you. So you just go to infinity.com, go solar 2021 tab, uh, right there you have the opportunity to sign up directly or you can email us at solar at infinity.com. Uh, we will be issuing a survey as a follow-up to this webinar so we can learn what you would like to see for our Q4 webinar. Uh, spoiler alert, we're thinking about how to electrify your home. What that means is how you can go 100% electric and then offset it with solar to be a net zero home, which is the way of the future. And we have many clients that have done it. We're going to be going back to our original format and filming live interviews, um, taking a tour of the equipment so you can see what it looks like, how it impacts those families. Uh, definitely something really cool to see. And if you go to GoSolar2021 on NVIDIA.com, there's also some solar champion resources. If you have solar and you want to share it with everybody in your family, your friends, your neighbors, 
um, there's some resources to help you out to have the right information, to give them some more information, to talk to them about it. And then lastly, we want to thank our sponsors. Um, as part of our slide deck, we have some more information about the Sierra Club Machannon Group. They're a huge supporter of our educational webinars. Um, they have a ton of upcoming events where you can become a volunteer, get more involved at sierraclub.org backslash Pennsylvania backslash Machannon. So that's a great organization to get involved with. And also Penns Valley Conservation Association. Um, their mission is to serve as a steward for the natural and cultural communities in the upper Penns Creek watershed and really preserve and honor the agricultural roots of the Penns Valley. We've worked with them in the past. They, if you are actually a PVCI member, you get $100 off per kilowatt of your system installed. Um, and Infinity will donate $100 per kilowatt of solar back to the PVCA as well. Uh, you can also get a discounted energy audit. Um, oh, I see that Andy mentioned that the Sierra Club Machine and Group president just went solar. So that's super meaningful to us that uh, they chose us to help them go solar. Uh, and you can check out PVCA at pensvalley.net. We also have another sponsor, Penn Environment, which is also another amazing association. Um, their volunteers help raise support and visibility across the state to protect our environment and climate and advocate for renewable energy powered future. Um, there is penenvironment.org, or you can follow them on Facebook. They have a lot of volunteer opportunities. Um, I'm also seeing that Andy is mentioning that we'll, we will be at Crick Fest, the PVCI Crick Fest, which is a 5K and 10K run, uh, taking photos for them via drone and also talking about solar, handing out some videos. So if anybody wants to join us on September 17th, we're gonna be promoting that event. Now that this event is concluded on Facebook and you can find that immediately or just go into Facebook and search PVCI Crick Fest. It's an amazing event. Um, and we also have the Clearwater Conservancy as one of our sponsors. Uh, they conserve and restore our natural resources through land conservation, water resource stewardship, and environmental outreach across central Pennsylvania, another great organization. And you can go to clearwaterconservancy.org to volunteer them or find out how you can help. Um, also, as a benefit of attending this webinar, if you're still with us, uh, you know, you get a free quote. There's a lot of companies out there that will charge you to get a proposal or an estimate. We don't do that. You can reach out to us for absolutely free. We'll talk to you until the sun goes down if that's what you want about solar. Uh, we're passionate about what we do. We would love to help you if you're interested. Uh, and you can also get $1,000 for referrals if it's a commercial business that you're referring to us or $500 for a residential referral. Um, you can also, if you are a homeowner attending this session, get 50% off your deposit and a 10 year extended warranty uh, for Infinity Craftsmanship for attending. So uh, all of this will be in the slide deck and in the follow up email, but thank you for joining us. Uh, if anybody has any final questions, we'll stick around for a couple more minutes, but we're already a little over. So if you have any questions, just pop them in. We'll be here for a couple more minutes. And some late, late breaking news from the Infinity um, part of the world, historically known as a state college, center county area business. We are now serving, fully serving Western Pennsylvania and the Pittsburgh region. I'm currently at my house in Penn Hills. So uh, if you have any friends or family in Pittsburgh, hit us up. Absolutely. It's also my dog's 10th birthday tonight. So happy birthday, Boone. Extra brownie points if you bring the dog in the shot. Dog is at, not at, at my girlfriend's house. He's not here. <laughs> but he is 10 and he's really cute. All right, we don't have any other questions popping up. So I'm gonna say with that, uh, thank you for coming and good night. We will be in contact with uh, T. Roy Jenkins uh, about your prize. Thank you so much and have a great night, guys. Thanks, David and Cam. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good night.